big calls on all the big races. Welcome to What A Shout, brought to you by The Racing Post and sponsored by Betfred. Wow, what a week we've got to talk about. We've got four wonderful days racing on the Knavesmire and we'll be taking a look at all the main races as far as Friday to steer us in the right direction. Hello, Keels. Hello, how are you? Good, good. good. What's going on? Uh, well, do you love York? York? How love hard York. do you find York. York as a punting track? Um, sometimes you find it very hard. I mean, it's funny. It's, um, on the first day on Wednesday, we haven't got a full field for any of the races, which is unusual. Uh, we have, an, well, we have sorry, the first race, but we have some massive fields later in the week. You always get big fields at York. Um, I love having, a, I love having a crack at all the big handicaps, obviously. Um, but no, I love the track, and uh, it's a great place to go as well. It's fun. That is for sure. What about when it rains? Do you find that that makes it quite difficult at York? Because the ground can go, it doesn't just go soft, it goes gluey it, and it tacky. Can. Well, that's why it's called the Navesmire, isn't it? Yeah, but, you know, I mean, dare we say it, forecast suggests otherwise. And good isn't there a bit of rain on Friday, maybe? No, or? I mean, very little. But really? I mean, it's good to firm, good in places, and on the BHA website, it says no irrigation currently planned. So we're looking at pretty fast ground. Day one, it, it looks like, and it'd be nice to have a the festival taking place on proper fast ground for I once, know. isn't it? And it's hopefully going to stay the same. Now, I oh. need to say a big well done for Witch Hunter at the weekend. <sighs> yes, managed to get myself out of trouble with that one. Mm, I feel uh, it feeling nice. in good form. Yeah. How's your form, Robbie? Good How shout. are you? Uh, yeah, been going all right. Um, it's my first big festival in a while. I was off for the whole of Goodwood, so oh. it's quite a nice. It feels like my first big one since Royal Ascot, so yeah, really looking forward to it. And the prize money at York is phenomenal, yeah, it's isn't mental, it? Yeah. It's when just you, brilliant. You compare like the city of York stakes to the Hungerford last week, like it's just there's just no no comparison whatsoever. So we'll yeah, hear, really we'll hear to William Haggis touch on that. The difference of running for sixty two thousand and two hundred and eighty four thousand, yeah, hence isn't? sacred went he just said, If I moan about prize money, mm. I've got to stick to my guns. Yeah, you know, you it's totally ridiculous. Get. So, yeah, I mean, we've got some phenomenal ratings, some great prize money and a lot to look forward to. Alongside the team, we've, um, we've also got Frankie with us. How are you? All good, yeah, looking forward to it. I've got um, two days on course, so I'm there Wednesday, Thursday. And as I said, it's always great fun. Um, the city's always buzzing. It's small fields, which makes for frustrating punting, I think, on the first couple of days because there's some short price favourites that are quite hard to take on, but equally are very short. Yeah, amongst four or five runners but yeah i'm really looking forward to it I, I i love the track i love it as a day out and especially when the sun shines at york which fingers crossed it should be it's one of my favorite places to actually go racing yeah i totally agree and so nice as keels alluded to that hopefully we're going to get a proper summer festival on uh, on some good ground well there isn't a better time to sign up to the racing post members club you can get your first two months for just 9.99 check this out now are you ready to take your passion for horse racing to the next level with Racing Post Members Club, you gain exclusive access to the best racing insights, analysis and tools. Immerse yourself in award-winning content from interviews with the sport's biggest stars to race previews and behind-the-scenes features. Get the inside track with early access to the Racing Post digital newspaper from 9pm in the evening and daily selections from our expert tipsters. Racing Post Members Club is your ultimate ticket to the thrilling world of racing. Subscribe today and pay just £9.99 per month for the first two months with the code SUMMER. See the link in the video description for more information. Terms apply. Great to be joined by trainer William Haggis, who's well armed with ammunition for the week ahead at York. William, a track that you particularly enjoy and you've had lots of success over the years. Oh yeah, I love York. Everyone loves York. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait. And you've plenty of runners there. Um, I guess you'll be back and forward each day, probably stay up for a couple of days. It's a good fun meeting, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fun meeting. It's a, it, it's a busy one because we've just spent a few days in Deauville. And it's, um, you know, we don't want to be away from home too much. But yes, we will stay. We'll celebrate with uh, Clipper Logistics owner Steve Parkin, who's having a party tomorrow night on Thursday night. And we'll race Friday and probably stay Friday night, race Saturday and come home. So it's a, a fun week, as you say. Good stuff. Deauville is also fun. Um, how many did you buy there at the sales? I personally didn't buy any, but uh, <laughs> I, hope, I hope one or two might come our way. We, we'll see. 
Good stuff. Well, I'm not going to ask you about every runner at York because we'd be here for a long time, but I'm going to touch on what appear to be the um, the obvious ones. Loose Cannon in the Acom uh, won his only start so far at York. I think Danny uh, said he was sort of forced to go a bit early on him because the one next to him got raced. They got racing terribly early, but he stuck his head out. Obviously, only a maiden race and a restricted one to boot, so... He's got a bit to find, but I think he's quite a nice horse. He may prefer a bit more cut in the ground, but he well deserves his chance in a race of this nature. Mm, good stuff. Pin of four in the 4.45, the five furlong handicap. She won really nicely at uh, Nottingham last time. Yeah, she won well, actually. Uh, I was very pleased with her. And um, uh, she's just running at five furlongs for the first time, which I'm not she bred to be quick. But whether they'll be a bit quick for her and, and she'll get outpaced, I'm not sure. But she's a nice filly. She deserves a shot at a race like that. Moving on to Thursday, Relief Rally is obviously a, a huge player in the Lowther, having won the Super Sprint and run so well at Royal Ascot the time before. Yeah, she's pretty pretty useful, Emma. Um, you know, obviously, uh, she, there are a couple in the Queen Mary that take her on again. And they, uh, one of them's improved, Flora of Bermuda. And Beautiful Diamond was well fancied in the Queen Mary. But our filly did nothing wrong, and I see no reason why she shouldn't run a really good race. Yeah, she certainly looks to set the standard and looks very much the one they've all got to beat. Sea Theme and Market Value, both in the Gall Trees. Um, sea Theme won nicely at Doncaster last time. Yeah, only won a maiden, but uh, I thought did well. Uh, it's it's a, a grade below what she's going to take on on Thursday, but she's well worth a shot at a race like that. As is market value, who's uh, been ready for a step up in trip now. Um, she's a useful filly. We had her in the Melrose, but we want to try and get some black type. She's obviously out of estimate. She'll enjoy quick ground. Um, and, you know, the filly that beat her at Chester went on Sparks Fly and won a few races. This is, this is a useful filly market value. She'll run well. OK. Then on to Friday, a Lake Forest in the gym crack. Yeah, he worked this morning. We, I think we got. I haven't spoken to the owners yet, but I think we're going to run him. Um, obviously, just saw um, got did the race back to front in the morning. That was the horse that beat him in the uh, uh, July stakes. And then I went for a penalty kick at Newmarket. He ran like a donkey, <laughs> a finished fourth. But he's much better than that. And we've. I've always fancied going for the gym crack with him. It'll be a tough assignment. He'll be twenty-five to one. But I see no reason why he shouldn't run. Um, and Zoe in the quite valuable Phillies mile and a quarter handicap. Yeah, she's going to run. She's been a long time off. Uh, she's done a bit of work. She's been off to Chelmsford uh, for a bit of work. She's ready to go, I think. She'll like top of the ground. Um, I want to try and make her a stakes winner. So obviously we're not going to get any black type in this. But I, I thought she should run here and then hopefully go for the John Musker at Yarmouth. Yeah, that's always quite a tough little place to get black type, isn't it, that race in Yarmouth? It always ends up being quite hot. What about Saturday, sacred in the city of York Stakes? You bypass the Hungerford at the weekend. Yeah, there's not a lot of point, Emma, me bleating about prize money, which I do consistently, <laughs> and then uh, running in a 62 grand to the winner, Group 2, when the following week there's a 283,000 pound uh, prize for a similar race so uh, she's running uh, i think newbury suits her well actually it's a shame but um she didn't run very well at york last year but it got quite loose uh, and that didn't suit her she's really well i thought she ran a great race at ascot and um you know I, i'm very happy with her condition and then a word on the melrose you're probably not totally clear on what's what at the moment but do you, do you know what you're likely to run well, Lordship definitely runs. It's whether we run Alhambra Palace as well. Um, if the top weight runs, Peking Opera will be five pounds out of the handicap, which is not ideal. But I think Adam Farragher will ride him uh, at that low weight and Tom will ride Lordship. And, you know, Alhambra Palace is an improver. Uh, he just may be better with a little bit of dig in the ground. Most of the halves are. But if, if we got a bit of rain and it got to good or on the slow side of good, I think he would be very competitive.
Yeah, kind of mixed forecast, isn't there? Bits and pieces of rain around maybe Friday and Saturday, but dry until then. Um, what have I not mentioned that I should have mentioned that you quite like for the week? <laughs> Um, well, you know, every trainer's got one in the handicap. So I, I, I quite like, funnily enough, uh, we run one in the last on Saturday called Garcy, who came there pulling a car to Ascot and then emptied quite quickly. And Tom was pretty adamant he didn't stay, or the jockey was. I can't remember who rode him that day. <laughs> um, and so we're going to pull him back to a mile and a quarter. Uh, which will be interesting. And I like a filly in the filly's handicap, I think, on Thursday called uh, Unequal Love. She's getting the hang of it, and she's a nice filly. But hopefully they'll run well. But it's, it's fiercely competitive. Everyone wants to win, and we're no different to anyone else. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Have a good week at York, and all the best. Thanks, Emma. See you soon. Many thanks to William Haggis for being as obliging and honest as always. He actually has a runner in the first race that we're going to talk about. That is the Acom Stakes. It's a seven furlong group three. Frankie, how do we bet here? Yeah, we've got Ballymount Boy at the top of the market. Um, nine to four. Cogitate, who made a nice debut. Ten to three. Edwardian. Um, Fred O'Brien, seven to two. And then it's Sixties, Loose Cannon and, and Bigger, the rest. So it's, yeah, a relatively small field, I guess, to kick us off. Um, I found it quite tricky, this race, if I'm honest, but I'd probably be sticking with the favourite. Yeah, I'll start with you, Robbie, here, because yeah. obviously second in the Richmond, he brings strong form Bowman to the book. Boy, yeah, he's been bought by uh, Waffenan Racing, who are sort of taking over for <coughs> ambitious owners. Um, but he's got different conditions here. He's never run on fast ground on turf. Uh, it was pretty testing at Goodwood. So I think I'm just about against him. Uh, I always like to look for one at a price uh, in these sort of juvenile races. Uh, I was gravitating towards Loose Cannon and Indian Run. Um, Loose Cannon's obviously won here over the course and distance, did it well in his first start. He was very well back to 11 to 4 into 13 to 8. Um, I just thought that, that, was a, that was a good run from him. Um, and Indian Run as well, his, uh, his performance at Ascot was, was really impressive. The second's come out and won since. He's definitely going to be suited by uh, a longer trip. He's well related to uh, some stayers in his pedigree. And uh, he's just been given a duo's entry. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure about Cogitate. The second boiling point came out and has beaten quite easily at odds on since. Uh, you just go through it. I think you can sort of find holes in all of them. So I'd be more inclined to take a flyer at a couple of prices. What do you think, Kiel? taking a flyer as well? Uh, uh, yeah, I agree with Robbie. I mean, the thing about Ballymine Boy, it's easily the best form in a race, isn't it? But it is soft ground very form, different. very soft ground form. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's going to be quick. It's, it's definitely going to be quick on, on, on day one. Uh, you've got two once race horses in there who, you know, the market seems to like cogitate, like as as uh, Robbie has alluded to, uh, the one up didn't exactly frank the form. And uh, there's another issue too, a couple of stats for you. Once raced juveniles, Charlie Hills has never won a group race with a once raced juvenile. Mm. Uh, 0 from 24 since he started training. Wow. William Haggis, Loose Cannon, has only won one since 2011, one from 16, and that was in 2011. It was a winner of this race, funnily enough, so uh, I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, so it just goes to show how hard it is. Yeah. I mean, I think three. I think there have been three of the last ten have done so, but all at bigger prices than these two. I came down on Indian Run. I just liked the way uh, he went about it at Ascot. He obviously saw out the six furlong really, really well, picked up nice. The runner-up sprang the form by winning very easily next time. So uh, there is a bit of substance to it. And uh, like Robbie said, you've got the, got the big entries afterwards. Um, Edwardian runs for Aidan O'Brien. Looked looked a bit. I remember it was five furlongs, admittedly, last time. He traded. He went off at odds on. Traded at sixteen in running. Uh, <laughs> got up one well, going up two furlongs. They're always when they run in this race. They're always a long way down the O'Brien pecking order. He hasn't won it since two thousand. So for me, it's long time. Run. Small field for the Voltager and a strong favourite, Frankie. How short? Yeah, shortening. Um, probably will continue to, to do so. Gregory's five to four at the moment. Um, continuous second favourite, nine to four. Castleway, ten to three, and then you've got Canberra Legend and Artistic Star both at sixteens. Gregory, three from three. Obviously, an impressive winner of the Queen's Vars. How, how short or not short do you think he is at that price? Uh, I mean, too short. I mean, the shorter he gets, the more I'd be inclined to, to lay on myself. Um, obviously, hasn't done anything wrong. Been fairly green in doing it. He is coming back in trip. He is under a penalty. 
Uh, and it doesn't give him anything in hand of continuous or castle way in my, in my eyes. I think they've both got a shot of beating him. Uh, obviously, artistic style has some decent form in, in, in there as well. I think it's a, I think it's a more open race than, than that suggests. I just about favour Castle Way. Um, like the way he went about it at Newmarket. I don't think coming back a furlong uh, will bother him. In fact, I think it will probably help him uh, from that Bahrain trophy. Mm. And you know, he might be able to get his own way up front as well. Uh, so he'll be the one for me. What do you think? Yeah, I, think against? In, I think he's entitled to be that price. He's got the best form. His Queen's of Isles run was good, but yeah. like Kiel says, he's dropping in trip. He looked a real relentless stayer galloper at Royal Ascot, and he's got the three pound penalty. And on the figures, continuous is actually the one to beat. He's getting three pound and rating one pound below. Uh, I liked him. Uh, I would also wager that the King Edward form is working out better than the Queen's of Isles form. Uh, we've had, obviously had King of Steel come out and run well in the, in the King George. And a rest obviously bolted up at Newbury at the weekend. So I quite like that form line. Um, is we were all over a rest, weren't we? He's all for <laughs> we didn't get off much of a price on, in the end. On. <laughs> it yeah, was 7-2, to two, wasn't it, when we yeah, were doing the programme? Amazing, amazing touch. Uh, but uh, Continuous also has got nothing to prove on the track. He was third in a, in a good Dante on his return. I just think he's a really good horse. And the fact that Aidan, he had quite a few entries in this. He's only relied on one. Normally when he runs a few... It's more of a scattergun approach. He's not really sure who the best one is. Continuous could still be that. He's very unexposed, so he'll do for me. Can't wait for the Jebmont International. Paddington, he's out again. Um, and he's going to go off a very short price favourite, Frankie, isn't he? Yep, 8-13. to 13. Um, Again, another frustratingly small field betting-wise. Mostadaf, 9-4. to four. Nashua, 9-1. to one. And the Foxes, Dante winner, 16s. Can Mostadaf... Get near Paddington. Yeah, we can beat him. Uh, I, I think we're getting a little bit overboard about Paddington. I think he's a really, really tough horse, and I'm glad he's out. Yeah, think of I love bad... the fact they run him in all yeah, these exactly. big races. Think, about, think of how bad this race would be if he wasn't in. Yeah, you know, he's a fantastic horse. He's hard as nails. If you only, if you only, if you only have one race to go on, one bit of form to go on, and that was the last bit of form they did, then Mustard would be favourite. Winning the Prince of Wales by four lengths, far better for yes. a piece of form than beating Factor Cheval by a length and a half in a Sussex. In the Sussex. Now, I think the other thing about Paddington, he's never run on good to firm ground. Uh, neither is Sire or Dam ever ran on good to firm ground. So there is that little bit of a question mark. He obviously handles good round fine enough, as though his head, although his head went up high at Sandown. Yes. And I think that was probably the fastest ground he the ran ground. on there. So that, that issues me. Whereas Mostadav absolutely loves it. Uh, the last two times he's run at a mile and two, he won by seven lengths um, in um, Saudi Arabia, uh, and he won by four lengths in the Prince of Wales' stakes. Uh, he's got speed, uh, he's got an official rating of 128, which is three pound higher than Paddington, obviously he's given him the weight for age, so you know, he's officially a better horse. Uh, he's odds against, um, yeah, I think he's got a right chance. Don't make, I, don't, I wouldn't myself bet like that. How would you price them up if you were if you were the bookie? Uh, almost each or two to me. Really? Almost each or two for me. I think Nash. I think Nash was a miler now, uh, and probably not quite in their league. And the Foxes has an absolute mountain to climb on form. So I think it's between them, and I think Mustard has a massive price. What do you think, Robbie? Yeah, me and Kills had a chat about this earlier. Um, we're both in agreement that Paddington is is certainly too short. Um, love very lovable horse, but I thought he, his form dipped in the Sussex last time. Uh, I mean, the horse he's beaten was only rated 113, getting seven pound, um, and he was probably advantaged by grabbing the rail, I'd say. So I don't know if he if he isn't quite at his tip top best. Then I mean, clearly, that Mostas Prince of Wales' form is just as good as anything Panton's ever done. So you can see why they should be sort of each two. But uh, I just think the Foxes is uh, too big at 16 to one. Um, outside of four, but. He's ideally suited to fast ground on this trip. He's obviously won the Dante over course and distance. Didn't stay one mile four on the derby. But I just think he's the one in the field that is capable of stepping up a bit more from what he's done. And he was unlucky not to win the Belmont derby. He missed the break. He was from the widest stall. Uh, I thought that was a really good run. So I just don't think he sh I think he should be single figure odds and at the prices, Foxes for me. Wow. So we're getting Paddington beat in the studio, and what a shout. Let's move on to Thursday, and we're going to start with the Lowther here. Relief Rally is sure to be a short price favourite, and justifiably so. William really gave her the big up. She's very smart. Yeah, that's right. 15 to 8 for Relief Rally at the top of the market, and the one they've all got to beat. Um, Brian Moore looks to ride Cherry Blossom, currently 9 to 4. Jim Murphy on Flora of Bermuda, 72, and then 8 and bigger. 
Yeah, relief rally at 15 to 8. William was very bullish about her. He said she's very smart and she's looked it, hasn't she, so far? She has looked it. I mean, you have to bear in mind that in the um, super, super sprint, sprint. the, the runner-up was only rated 76. <laughs> you know, she's rated 100 and 106. I mean, she was entitled to do that. Mm. She does have roughly the form to win a modest running of this race already uh, and is likely to get better and let's not face it it does look like a modest running of this race like, you know i don't think, think we've seen a really really top-notch two-year-old filly yet uh, and she's right at the you know she's at the head of the market and she deserves to be she's the one to beat i'd give star a mystery another chance because I think she wants fast ground. I know she got beat at six on last time, but she was six on for a reason, and that's because she did look very, very good when she won at Newmarket the time before, uh, getting beat by Persian Dreamer in the Duke of Cambridge. And, you know, if she hadn't run in the Duke of Cambridge, she'd be second favourite. Uh, I'm not, I wouldn't take it that that last run is her best piece of form, and I think she'd be, I think she'll have a right chance uh, against Relief Rally. I think there's a right old value bet here. Uh, beautiful Diamond at 11 to 1. Um, so obviously she's gone off favourite for the Queen Mary at the expense of Relief Rally. Um, it was only a, a second run after an excellent debut at Nottingham. It was only come two weeks after that. She did. She ran really well in third. Like it was an excellent effort. But I mean, Colbert said after the race she was quite a weak filly. She's we're gonna give her a bit of time off and rebuild her, bring her back for the autumn. Um, and I just think there's a lot of potential that Nottingham performance did suggest that she could be top class. Um, I just don't think Relief Rally is is unbeatable. And um, I could certainly see that 11 to 1 not really hanging around for Beautiful Diamond. I think there's a lot of talent there. Good stuff. But what about the Yorkshire Oaks? Because it's good that we've got Save the, uh, Save the Last Dance and Blues talking, taking each other on again, first and second in the Irish Oaks last time. What's going to go our favourite here, Frankie? Looks like Save the Last Dance, uh, 5 to 2. Currently, free wind, who I regrettably napped last time out. Four to one. <laughs> Blue stocking, also four to one. Um, Allison, sevens. And then Ross Carberry, I'd, I'd give a chance to uh, at double figure price of 10 to one. Have you got a preference between the top two? Um, I don't know if we're getting carried away saying that Save the Last Dance can't race on anything with firm in the description. She was only a length and a half off. Um, soul sister in the oaks i know that she's obviously one on really testing conditions but i wouldn't go as far to say she can't win a race on good or good to firm ground and she is a very good horse so at the top of the market i'd probably start with say the last dance but i think i'd be trying to find an each way bet in this and, and ross carberry i think is potentially overpriced what do you think about uh, these two robbie yes uh it's interesting i mean I, I was on blue stocking last time and obviously thought she was home and hosed in the irish oaks uh save the last dance just couldn't have won from from sort of you stop it one or two finals out she could not have won but she ground it out i mean the, the soft ground is clearly clearly a help to her i, I sort of agree with frankie like I, I think she's probably fine on a, on a quicker service but that soft ground just turns it into a bit more of a slog and she's clearly really well suited by that so on this quicker ground I would imagine Blue Stocking can reverse the form. I think she's really classy. She's had excuses in all her races. She's probably the moral winner of the Irish Oaks, really. But uh, actually, agree with Frankie. I quite like Ross Carberry as well at a price. Um, it's very versatile filly. She's she's done it over a mile two and a mile six. Uh, she's close fourth in the uh, pretty poly, a couple of starts back. And then she just ran into a superior stayer on soft ground in Emily Dickinson. I think this one mile four trip is perfect for her. I think she, she's holding, she's a very consistent Horse, and I don't think this is the best race in the world. So if there's double figure prices about her, I'd be interested. Uh, yeah, I agree with pretty much what everything um, Frankie and Robbie said. I think you've got to have a little go at an outsider here. They're good, the front two, but I don't think they're that good. Um, and I do think, you know, say the last times might handle fast ground, but she's such a strong stayer that she, you know, it's not going to be in her favour that's going to be quick. I like Novakai. I think she bounced back to form and they tried to turn her into a one mile two furlong horse earlier in the season when she's bred for, for, when she's bred for further. Uh, and she came out and she absolutely hacked up last time. It was, only in a, it was only in a listed race, but it was nearly a five length win. Uh, very, very easy. You remember last season, she was second in the May Hill, second in the Phillies Mile. She had an official rate of 113 there, which is one pound below Save the Last Dance, one pound above Blue Stocking. Uh, and she's a, a nice big double figure price. I think she's a she's a filly on the way back, and I expect her to run very well. 
Good, good, good. Well, let's skip ahead to Friday now, the Lonsdale 225. I'm really looking forward to this race, Frankie. How do they bear? Yeah, this is probably the race I'm most excited for, just to see how it pans out. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, got Coltrane at the top of the market at the moment, five to two, Quickthorn uh, threes, which I can't believe, given the way the Quickthorn won at Goodwood and has done so at York before as well. Cars Mon Ami, seven to two, and then um, you're looking at bigger for the rest of your letter, 13 to two, and Aldo Aldo off seven to maybe a bit of the price. But yeah, I mean, for me, it's all eyes on Quickthorn, and, and I'd be happy at three to say, catch me if you can. Catch me if you can. Kiels, what's your take on what happened at Goodwood and what's going to well, happen at York? Well, I mean, you know, it's quite funny. Anyone, any jockey who rides a winner from the front, we all say it's an inspired ride, don't we? But I mean, the fact is that three leads are given rather than just taken, aren't they? And mm -hmm. you do it once and you think, I'm not going to do it again. But they've now done it twice with Quickform. They've done it in this race and they did it in... Uh, at Goodwood last time, and if they let him go ten lengths clear, I mean, uh, every single if they let him go ten lengths clear and don't make it, you know, don't make an effort to stay with him, given what he's already done, then yeah. they all need to be facing big bands if it happens a third time. So I cannot believe he's going to get the sort of lead that he was allowed at Goodwood. And if he is, I mean, they, you know, the whole racing world will be shaking their heads in disbelief. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and so for that reason, him. I have a feeling, you know, you know, he's either not going to go fast enough for him or he's going to go fast and they're going to go with him and then something will come from behind. And I think Elder Elderov is a very big price because he ran earlier this season giving, giving weight away under a big penalty at York and very, very nearly won. Now, he wasn't right in the Ascot Gold Cup. The market told you that because he was a massive drifter that day. But he did run on again at York last time and I think, you know, I think back on this decent ground, uh, and in a fairly run race, I think he's going to be a massive player. I think he's a big price. What do you make of the top yeah, three? Yeah, I, I wanted to say the exact same thing essentially about Elder Eldrov, but he did miss. I'm a bit because he missed a race at the Curra he was going to run in due to illness, due to being unwell. So I don't know if that's going to have left the mark. It could be something seriously minor. But I totally agree that Yorkshire Cup run when given him five pounds to Giovanotto was top form. So I ju just with that doubt over his well-being, I thought Giovanotto was interesting. He is improving. Um, he ran just as well as Elder Elder of Courage, one of me, Coltrane did in the Good Work Cup behind quick form. Um, he's the one that, that he seriously seems to be getting better with each start. But uh, yeah, I'd probably have it between those two, to be honest. Um, quick form, I'd, like as I can't see him getting his own way again. Um, sort of, we've, been, we've fallen for the quick form trap in the past. Um, obviously, it, it worked at Goodwood, but... Um, Quite often he doesn't, he's, he's just not able to pull that off and the jockey's going to be wise to that. So I will side with one of those four-year-olds. For all that we, t obviously the jockeys aren't going to um, give quick fawn an easy lead, but for all that we talk about whether it's a good or a bad ride, you know, a good ride from Tom or a bad ride from those in behind, do you not think we could also give some credit to the horse? And that, is, that they have been very good runs from the horse, whether they want to go with them or not. Yeah, it's the only thing though. But the, the thing about him is he's tried... Uh, to make the running on other times when they haven't ignored him and he's only managed to win once and that was in listed company. So yeah. I think that when they do stick with him, I'm not, I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong, when he's on form and he does go fairly hard, it has to be said, when he's on form he's a very, very good horse but I think if they stick with him, something will beat him. Yeah. Fascinating race. The gym crack next. Um, how do they bet here? Killian, 64 at the top of the market, and Matt, who um, I'm filling in for, I told him, give me one race, give me one winner, and he said Killian won't be beating the gym crack. So on Matt's head, Killian is your winner. Um, Jazz Brahms, <laughs> 10 to that. 3. Yeah, but here's sixes. Hartem, 7 to 1. Kings Gamble, 8. And then you're into double figure prices beyond Emperor's Sun. As simple as that or not? I can't see both of you piling <sighs> into a 6 to 4 shot. <laughs> nah, not for me. It's never as simple <laughs> as that, is it? Um, interesting, interesting point. I mean, obviously he was beaten by Big Ebbs at, uh, at Goodwood. The ground was very, very soft that day. Just, be just behind him, well, I mean, a fair way behind him in the end, actually, was Bahir, uh, who finished fourth. Now, this is a horse that Richard Hannon says, when you see his work at home, he could, you know, he could be the best two we've ever had in some of his work at home, and he hasn't yet done it on the course. He did win easily second time out. Went back to five furlongs at Goodwood last time. He was a monster drifter because they all knew he wasn't going to handle the ground, but didn't half travel until the final furlong. He actually traded at about 13 or 18 running, having drifted all the way out to 9 to 1. I think he's got to be worth another chance on fast ground just to show us how good he is. 
uh, and whether he lives up to what Richard Hanna has been saying about him. Wow. It's a nice angle. Um, I was thinking Johan Bram was, I could see the money coming for him as well. He's, he's sort of three to one, four to one at the moment. But uh, his form also ties in with big Evs like Killian and uh, Bahir. Uh, he was good second in the Windsor Castle on his second start to uh, big Evs. But that horse is an out and out speed ball, as we know. He's running in the number four later on in the week. And I just thought Johan Bram, you sort of look at his pedigree, it doesn't really say five furlongs at all. He's, he's by Sayuni, he's out of a mile, a horse who stayed a mile two. So he's definitely better over an extra furlong. He's got entries over much further than this as well. He's in, in the Beresford Stakes next month. So uh, I think there's a serious engine there. And if he, if he gets his chance, Johan Bram. But I'll take respect what Kiel says about the Hannon horse. Looking forward to the Nunthorpe a little bit later on. That's next up at 3.35 and Highland Princess, Highfield Princess, I should say, is back to defend her crown. She's been brilliant. What kind of prize is she likely to go off? 11 to 8 we're looking at at the moment. And um, the rematch between Highfield Princess and Brad's house is Brad's house currently at 7 to 2. Uh, Big Evs, who we've just been speaking about, fives dramatised to disappointing at well, that's got, has been good this season, 17 to 2. And then regional gets you into double figure prices at 10s. Kiels, just quickly, we did a preview for Royal Ascot, and you thought Highfield Princess was the absolute half of yeah, absolutely, certainty yeah. in that yeah. race. I mean, and funny, then, uh, uh, yeah, I think the thing is, you didn't win, but I thought so on the strength of, you know, it's horses for courses, isn't it? And it's different course, Ascot. And I thought she was on the strength of what she'd done at York. Yes. Uh, and her form figures at York. Three. And that she does stay six. Well, she so. does stay six, yeah. Her form figures at York, 3 2, 1 1 1 2. Well, sorry, 1 1 2. Uh, only went down by half a length to a short blue in the Duke of York, giving her five pound. Absolutely bolted up in this race last year. She's very much the one to beat, isn't she? I think she turned her form round with Brad Sell. I know he's won over the track as well. Uh, one who actually interested me at a bigger price is Twilight Calls. I thought he showed he was on his way back at Ascot last time. Would definitely have been on the heels of both Bradsell and um, uh, uh, Highfield Princess with a clear run. Whether he's quite fast enough for this much faster five furlong is another matter. But yeah, I think that this one is Highfield Princess's to lose. Mm. Robbie, I'd like to see a win. What, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, it's one, one of my favourite horses, one of everyone's favourite horses, I feel. Yeah, it's such um, an amazing story, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. I mean, you, you look at the price and thinking, well, Bradsell beat her last time. Why on earth is he sort of three times the odds, but it is horses for courses. Brad Sell just raises his game at Ascot. And for whatever reason, Highfield Princess doesn't seem quite at a, at a peak at Ascot. Um, you go for a York form, obviously brilliant win the Numfop last season. Excellent run on her return in the uh, City of York stakes. So I think she's going to be tough to beat. Uh, respect what Kiel was saying about Twilight Calls, I just worry if he is, like Brad Sell, a bit of an Ascot specialist. I'm not sure this is a vintage race, so I'd be pretty surprised if Highfield Princess didn't do the job. Yeah, I hope so. I think that's uh, all of us in agreement there. Well, before we get stuck into our naps, go check out racingpost.com forward slash free bets to see how you may be able to get £200 of free bets. So, Frankie, best bets of the next three days at York. I'm glad you've come to me first, because um, <laughs> Robbie did mention uh, thoughts earlier. Beautiful Diamond, uh, double figure price, I think, is a great each way bet. Wasn't miles behind the favourite relief rally at Ascot, um, and it's just a much better price. And I think, yeah, we'll we'll run certainly give you a run for your money anyway. Robbie? Oh, the gentleman stole my thunder. I was going to. <laughs> Were you going to go up. with that? I was going to go Beautiful Diamond, but I'm going to. I'm going to be a maverick and go for the foxes in the job. Oh, instance. wow. I do, yeah, I just think he's way too big, to be honest. I don't think it's a great race. And he's got everything in his favour. So that'll do me. Kills. It's two mile handicap tomorrow, 4-10. Aztec Empire. Uh, third uh, to Sweet William last time at Newbury. And apart from him, was the last one off the bridle. Uh, it was lashing down with rain that day, and he, the ground ended up soft. And I think he wants quick ground, which he's never had because he hasn't had it on turf yet. He's a son of Cedar Stars, and this is a much, much weaker race. I'm very surprised he isn't favourite. I expect he will be. Uh, but this is a, is a nice price, at around six to one. Good. Well, I'm going to go with Sonny Liston, who runs in the Mile, Valleyville Mile Handicap on Friday. 
He was second in the Hunt Cup um, when he was on the wrong side, and then he actually ran really well when he was fifth in the um, in the Valuable Mile Handicap at Goodwood last time. Ryan Moore was very quick to put forward his name for <laughs> for the ride next time, and I think he, I think anyone. he'll suit him. <laughs> yes, Look, I, I, I know like, what happens in this program. You like tap 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 suit. away throughout what the program. Of what sort of price is it at the moment? You know? I he was backed a few days ago, but the last time I looked, yeah, no, he was back out price, to about 14 to 1 or something. No, no, it's, it's Thursday, isn't it, Louise? Yeah. For, uh, yeah. yeah, it's Thursday. Oh, sorry. I'm on, yeah. the, I'm on the wrong it's day. Thursday. Yeah, put them away. It's on Friday, chap. <laughs> 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 sorry, yeah, that, that mole handicap on Friday. Yeah, no, he's got a massive chance if he handles York. He's got two poor runners to his name at York. He does indeed. Were excuses. Exactly. Currently 8 to 1. Oh, 8 to 1. Oh. When I looked on my Racing Post app earlier, he was 14 to 1, but yeah. I feel like you've been trashing the price throughout the programme. That's what he <laughs> normally does. <laughs> well, the Breeders' Cup is just a few months away now. How would you like to be heading there for yourself? The Racing Post have a really good competition, and here's how you can get involved. And this ends this week, so do look now. So Frankie, you've already mentioned you're heading up to York for a couple of days. Have fun. I'm jealous. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, the sun will be shining. It'll be packed, I'm sure. Um, hopefully a few winners we've maybe found on today's show. And yeah, really looking forward to it. And, and then checking back in ahead of the Saturday's racing. Good stuff. Robbie? Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, as I say, I'm sort of itching for a big festival. It feels like an awfully long time for me missing Goodwood. So, uh, yeah, Do you hopefully... feel rested after a break? Oh, yeah. Raring I mean, to I, go. I, I pretend to moan, but I did enjoy sort of not, <laughs> not keeping up and stuff. It's nice to get away. But now we're back. It's nice to be involved. It's good to have you back involved. Thank Kiels, you. what about you? Uh, yeah, loving it. I'm in the office every single day. This oh, week. my gosh. That's very unlike him. Yeah, but it'll, it'll, it'll be accompanied by work. a few pints along, along the um, way, won't it, while you're watching? Yeah, be rude probably, not to? Probably. Yeah. Okay. So it's a tough week for you. Yeah, my job under orders not to have too much because we're going away <laughs> to a wedding next month, and I've started to grow big enough to outgrow my recent new suits. So oh dear. I've got to get back on it. <laughs> well, good stuff. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us. We will be back on Friday for an Ebor special for What a Shout. See you then, and good luck punting between now and then. <laughs>